Hey, everyone. Yeah, I know it's been a while since my last video. Life's been crazy busy with client projects and studying. You know how it goes. But I'm back now with our second video. Better late than never, right? Okay. Today we're diving into something super cool. Creating animations in both Figma and Ride. But let's do a quick recap of what we've covered so far. Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to easily create this type of design in Figma. Welcome. So, in the last video, I walked you through designing this carousel from A to Z. Everything from finding images on Pinterest, to cutting out each image using tools like PhotoP, Remove BG, Photoshop, and others. I broke down all the design steps in Figma in detail. If you missed that video or need a refresher, no worries. Just check out the link in the description. Catch up real quick and then jump back into this one. Trust me, it'll help you follow along better. Later, I'll show you how to implement these animations on your website to make them interactive using Rive. But let's take it one step at a time. First up, Figma animations. Here's the key thing about Figma. It works with sequential animations. Let me break it down. If you want to animate a ball moving from point A to point B, you need to create two frames. One showing the ball at A, another at B. Then define the transition and trigger that'll make the magic happen. We're going to use this same logic to create our shoe animation. Here's how we'll break it down. First, we'll set up our initial carousel, getting all the colors right and positioning each shoe exactly where we want them. Then, we'll duplicate it to create our second carousel, where we'll adjust the positioning of each element and tweak the colors. Here's where the magic happens. When we create the transitions, Figma will recognize all these changes, both the positions and colors, as new data points. It'll automatically create smooth transitions between the original carousel's properties, colors and positions, and the new carousel's setup. Think of it like creating two snapshots, and Figma figures out how to smoothly move from one to the other. To create the transition, we'll need to head over to Figma's prototype section. There, we'll create a connection path between the carousels by linking from the element that'll have the trigger to the next frame. Pro tip, just click and drag from your trigger element to the destination frame. Super simple. Figma's got tons of triggers you can use. Clicks, taps, drags, while hovering, while pressing, mouse enter, mouse leave, mouse down, mouse up, after delay, you name it. Figma also gives us a bunch of different animation options when moving between pages. Let me break them down for you. Instant, snaps directly to the next screen. Dissolve, smooth fade transition. Smart animate, automatically animates matching layers. Move in, elements enter the frame, move out, elements exit the frame, push, one screen pushes the other out, slide in, new screen slides into view, slide out, current screen slides away. Each of these transitions gives your design a different feel and level of sophistication. There are also different types of transitions. Linear, ease in, ease out, ease in and out, ease in back, ease out back, ease in and out back, custom Bezier, etc. By the way, if you want a deep dive into all these transitions and how to use them, drop a comment below or vote in the poll I'll be posting. If there's enough interest, I'll make a dedicated video about it. Now, let's focus on creating our animation now. To make it happen, you'll define the transitions, which are basically the steps your animation goes through and the triggers that activate them. For this example, our trigger will be a click. Once we test it out, a few moments later. Boom, it works. Now you can set it up to swipe in both directions. And just like that, you've got yourself a clean, functional prototype in Figma. Okay. Now let's take it up a notch with Rive. Creating an animation in Rive is similar to Figma, but way more fluid here. 
Transitions are defined using keyframes placed on a timeline. Let me break it down for you. Points to screen. This is your timeline. A keyframe marks the state of an element at a specific moment, like its color, position, size, or rotation. So to animate the ball moving from point A to point B, you'd set up keyframes that specify its position at each step of the animation. The best part? You can customize the speed and smoothness of the animation by adjusting the easing for each keyframe. For this shoe animation example, we just need to set the position and rotation, and boom, there you have it. Our animation is complete. And that's it, folks. Now you know how to animate in both Figma and Rive. And for those who want the full experience, I'm also leaving the uncut version of this prototyping process. It might be super helpful, especially if you're just starting out with Figma. That's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.